African-American mathematician, Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker was born in Baltimore County, Maryland on November 9, 1731. Banneker had three sisters and grew up on a tobacco farm with his parents that was 100 acres. He learned how to read and write by his grandmother who bought a Bible from England. Banneker was fascinated by mathematical puzzles and then by the age of 21, he constructed a striking wall clock without even seeing one. It was like a puzzle to him. The tooth, wheels, and gears that he crafted from seasonal hardwood with a pocket knife. For a bell, he utilized each part of a glass bottle and metal container. Being the first clock in his area, many people would come to his cabin to listen and observe the time. The clock was said to continue to work successfully for more than 50 years until his death. Banneker inherited his family farm after both his parents passed away. He stayed there until his mother passed away. He continued to live there and grow and sell tobacco until he was 59. And what stopped him was because of health problems, so he decided to retire. His farm made him self-sufficient with his vegetable garden. He also produced a fruit orchard and had several beehives. Banneker was also known for astronomy. During this time, it worked out because President George Washington wanted to produce a survey of a selected area, so he hired Andrew Elcott. He, Andrew went to Elcott's lower mills with plans to hire his cousin George Elcott, but he was not able to leave, so Banneker was hired. Banneker worked in an observatory tent for more than four months, from the beginning of February until the end of April 1791. It was grueling work which forced him to spend long hours lying on his back, absorbing the stars in the sky. This level of work was hard on Banneker because of his age, but he continued. This also gave him the ability to work on the almanac that he wrote for the upcoming year in 1792. For his participation on the survey, along with travel, Banneker was paid a total of $60. During Banneker's free time, he worked on the almanac. The almanac included information on medicines and medical treatments and astronomy information and eclipse calculations by Banneker himself. James McHenry, a senator from Maryland, was so impressed that he took Banneker's almanac and published it. The almanac was named Benjamin Banneker's Peninsula, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia Almanac and Emerses of the Year of Our Lord, 1792. In addition, the sales were in Baltimore and were printed in Alexandria, Virginia, and in Philadelphia that made almanacs. The production of the almanacs proved immediate success for Banneker. His lifestyle changed somewhat as he became acknowledged by his neighbors and occasionally by others visiting the region. The next five years, Banneker continued to calculate on the almanacs and they were published and sold bearing his name. Banneker's almanacs became quite popular. People that came across the country mainly the United States, came to visit him just because of the almanacs. Between 1792 and 1797, Banneker published six almanacs in 28 editions. He continued to live alone, selling off and renting his land, then giving the rest to the Elcocks in exchange for a small pension. It was said that Banneker had no particular religion. But it was wrote by an early biographer that his life was one of constant worship in great temples and natures of science. This was said by Allen, 1921. As a place of worship, Banneker visited each of them, but gave preservation to the meetings of the Social of Friends, where he presented a most dignified aspect as his leaned on quiet contemplation 
on a long staff, which he always carried after passing his 70th year, and worshipped leaning on top of this staff. Martha Thompson, the daughter of George Elcott, gave a description of Banneker, who had seen him when she was a young woman, the countenance of Banneker, and she wrote, he had the most benign and thoughtful expression. A fine head of white hair surmounted his unusual broad and amped forehead, with still the lower part of his face was slender and sloped towards the chin. His figure was perfectly erect, showing no indication to stoop as he aged in years. His arraignment was always scrumptiously neat for that of the summer wear, being of unblenched linen, was beautifully washed and ironed by his sisters. In cold weather, he dressed in light color cloth, a fine drab broadcloth consisting his attire when he designed appearing in his best style. There is no known portrait of Banneker that exists. Lacking such, an image is frequently used as a woodcut portrait bust of a young black man, imagery not based on life. Proposed to be a Banneker, this image illustrates the cover of a 1797 edition of one of his almanacs. The most accurate reposition known may be found on a modern mural painting by the late William H. Smith of the survey of the federal territory. It hangs in the Maryland House on the John F. Kennedy Highway in Arbardine, Maryland. In 1980, the U.S. Postal Service issued a commissionative stamp honoring Banneker based on his imagery features. On October 9, 1806, during a nap following his unusual morning walk, Banneker quietly died in his sleep just one month shortly after his 75th birthday. Instructions that he left behind immediately following his death, that all of his items that he had borrowed from his neighbor, George Ellicott, including a work table, instructions, and a book was to be returned to him by Banneker's nephew including also was Banneker's astronomical journal. Something interesting that was found in Benjamin Banneker's journal was his mathematical puzzle of the equilateral triangle. This puzzle can be solved by middle and high school students. This problem can be solved without the use of algebra. As he was being buried into the ground, the mourners had just by happened to look over and see that his house that was a wooden building had suddenly burst into flames. Before help could be summoned, the entire structure burned to the ground. All the contacts were destroyed, including Banneker's clothing, other personal possessions, a few bits of furniture, a separate collection of books and printed copies of his almanac, as well as his feeble well-worn striking clock. The only items that had to escape destruction was his Bible, which had been removed from his house after his death and before the funeral, probably by one of his sisters. The cause of this fire has never been determined. Benjamin Banneker started life as a young man on a tobacco farm from being known as the first African-American scientist to creating a striking wall clock without even seeing one. From his mass knowledge of learning how to read and learning mathematical puzzles on his own, he led the way for others in the 18th century for astronomers and almanacs. Benjamin Banneker is a large part of history and without him, we would not be where we are today. And for that, we have to thank him.
Thank you for watching. My name is Jessica Hathaway and this is for my History of Mathematics class. The references will be linked below along with the image references. Thank you.